A few years ago, if you asked me what should I use to start with Linux, I would have said Zorin OS. It was solid, relatively up to date at the time of the release of Zorin OS 16, with a lot of good ideas, well implemented, and a nice looking and customizable interface. But with one of the slowest release schedules for a desktop distro and a base that was aging and aging, it became virtually impossible to keep recommending Zorin OS 16 to newcomers. Fortunately, Zorin OS 17 is now available and the general Linux desktop ecosystem is very different, making old bases not as much of a problem. Still, there are a bunch of things that I feel are not optimal in here. So today we'll look at what's new in Zorin OS 17, a bunch of things that it does to make it easier on Linux beginners, and if it can get my seal of approval as the distro I would recommend for beginners for the next year. Just like I can only recommend our sponsor to you. This video is sponsored by ProtonMail. You probably already know them. They are a private and secure email service with end-to-end -end and zero access encryption. And on top of that, they give you access to a full suite of online tools, like a calendar, contact, storage space, VPN, and password manager, all encrypted, of course. And ProtonMail keeps evolving, as it now can help you better manage your time with its new snooze and schedule features. You can now snooze an email that you don't want to read right now, and it will reappear in your inbox when you need it or when you have time. And if you work in a global team or if you have news to share but not before a specific time and date, you can also now schedule emails to be sent at a specific time. So the recipient will get it at the most convenient moment and not before you're ready. Your Proton account is free and if you need more advanced privacy and security features or more storage space, they have paid plans to help with that. So click the link in the description of the video and start reclaiming your privacy. So Zorin OS is still a GNOME-based, Ubuntu-based distribution, but their implementation of this desktop is very, very different and pretty good. Zorin OS 17 does not use the very latest GNOME. It's based on GNOME 43, not 45, which means you're giving up a few cool things. You don't have the thumbnails in the file picker, you don't get the security center in the settings, you don't get the much improved settings pages overall, you don't get the improvements to the quick settings menu, although you do get that quick settings menu. You don't get the new activities indicator, you don't get the faster search, the keyboard backlight settings, or the new image viewer app. It's nothing that will make your day-to-day -day experience insanely better, but you're still missing out on things that have been out for at least six months and sometimes more than a year. On top of that, you're getting GNOME Shell 43, but some of the apps aren't the ones from GNOME 43. For example, the software store is the one from GNOME 45, so you do get all the cool changes that GNOME developed, but other apps like the image viewer or the file manager are from GNOME 42. It's a mishmash of versions for various software that make it pretty difficult to judge in comparison with something else, so let's just judge the whole package on its own merits. What Zorin OS adds on top of this mismatched base is still those desktop layouts, which let you change how your desktop looks and feels in one click. The free version of Zorin OS starts with something akin to Windows 10 or KDE Plasma with a bottom taskbar, and you also get a more old Windows style layout, a more Windows 11 inspired style taskbar, or the general GNOME style layout if you prefer that. Apparently, they want to add a Chrome OS layout and a GNOME 2 inspired layout, but in my testing in Zorin OS Core, these are not available, so either they haven't been added yet, or they are limited to Zorin OS Pro, which is the paid version that already has more layouts than the free Zorin OS Core version. Now, all this work is done using GNOME extensions, but they are all neatly packaged in a one-click pre-built layout which makes all the hassle of setting things up yourself much, much faster. And it gives newcomers something familiar to get started with. You also get a Zorin appearance app with accent colors, dark mode, support for other themes, and a few other options to change how the interface looks and feels, but that's all stuff Zorin OS 16 already had. 
In terms of new stuff, the move to GNOME 43 means you get quick settings that you didn't have before and they are much more usable and nicer with their little pill buttons. You get improved performance in the GNOME shell. You get access to power modes with power save, balanced or performance mode. The latter one only being available if you have a dedicated GPU. And you get the new screenshot and screen recording app. As per Zorin specific changes, the default Zorin menu now gives you a search box to find anything you want. It does use the GNOME shell search backend, so you can just enable or disable search providers in the settings as normal. You also gain an all apps category to see everything sorted alphabetically. Also, Zorin OS seems to default to Wayland now, at least on the laptop I used to try it out, which means solid touchpad gestures to navigate in the desktop and some apps, better responsiveness, better smoothness, so that's really nice. And on top of that, Zorin OS 17 gives you a few visual changes that looked pretty familiar to the old Linux user that I am. Basically, it brings back some of the good old compiz effects, but a bit more tastefully done. First is the desktop cube. It can be enabled in the Zorin appearance settings, and it's triggered as a replacement for the activities view. Instead of this strip of desktops, you get the desktop cube. You can turn it with touchpad gestures or keyboard shortcuts, and windows are laid out on top of it with a nice parallax effect floating over the desktop. And honestly, I was expecting to just blast that thing out of the way for being less usable and just a gimmick, but in reality, it's not less usable than the strip of desktop. It just looks different. Because in the default strip of desktops, you don't really see all your windows on all your desktops. And that's also the case with the cube. So you're not losing any usability. The only weird thing is that, well, it's a cube, but it's not because GNOME has dynamic desktops, meaning they create a new one automatically and they remove desktops that have no windows, which means your cube is never really consistent in terms of the number of desktops it displays and how it looks. That's not an issue with the desktop strip because you only ever see one desktop at a time and a small bit of the other ones. But with the cube, it's always changing and since it's spatial and a 3D visualization, it just messes with your brain when it's not always the same shape of number of desktops. So it would probably have been better when you enable the cube to also enable a fixed number of desktops like for example four. The Alt Tab window switcher can also be replaced with a more visual 3D version of the default. And again, it looks good, but it's not more usable. You don't see all windows as well as a basic Alt Tab strip of thumbnails and icons. And it makes it harder to actually get to what you're looking for because you don't have the full list of app icons visible all at once. Both of these features can be enabled or disabled individually in the Zorin OS appearance app. By default, they are not on. And honestly, they're not that much less usable. They're not really more usable. They're just different than pretty. Now, what does improve productivity though is the new advanced tiling that Zorin OS added. Again, it needs to be enabled in the Zorin appearance settings. And it gives you not only quarter tiling, so you can just drag a window to a corner of your screen and it's going to occupy a quarter of your screen space, but also a lot of other options. For example, when you tile a window to a screen edge, you get a little pop-up to fill the rest of the space with another open window. And it creates tile groups, meaning that bringing one of the window to the fore will also bring the other one alongside it. You can configure the gaps between windows or the gaps with the screen edges, and you have a few other options, including keyboard shortcuts. It basically looks and feels and works exactly like the extension that Ubuntu added in 23.10, and it's probably the exact same thing. But on top of that, you also get a relatively hidden feature. Click the little info button and then advanced and enable advanced features. And now you've got tiling layouts available. They're not the best implemented tiling layouts I've ever seen. They're not legible or easy to create. You can't just place your windows how you want them and save that as a layout. You have to enter relatively cryptic series of numbers to define the percentage of the display each zone occupies. But I'm sure some people more familiar with tiling will find this accessible. 
It is obviously hidden for a reason. It might be powerful and people using tiling window managers will probably just get used to that very easily. But for a beginner, this is just not accessible or legible at all, which is probably why it's hidden behind a few clicks. Now, under the hood, Zorin OS 17 is Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. So you're getting packages that are close to being two years old. Zorin OS does have their own repos on top of that for a few app updates for their theme and own apps and the like, but the general base is relatively old. Nowadays though, it's not that big of an issue. If your desktop has all the features you need and you don't need the very latest libraries, just the latest apps, you can get that on Linux thanks to stuff like Flatpak. And fortunately, Zorin implements that out of the box with Flathub enabled. You also get Snap enabled by default for apps that aren't on Flathub. Or if you actually prefer Snap for some reason, I'm sure these reasons exist somewhere, maybe. So basically, if you want the latest features of an app, you can get them, no problem. And you're not that limited with the old LTS base. But Zorin OS uses the Linux kernel 6.2, which as far as I know is end of life and has been since May 2023. So that's really not good. And even after applying software updates, it's still 6.2. And I wish they had updated that if only because you would get much better hardware support and much better performance. Come on, 6.6 .6 LTS was just there. It's a long-term support. It will be supported for as long as your distro. Don't stick to an end-of-life kernel. You are also stuck at the NVIDIA drivers 535, so not 545, the latest ones that fix a lot of Wayland-related issues. And the Mesa drivers are 23.0, where 23.3 was released recently with a lot of improvements for recent hardware. So yes, the older base is not an issue for apps because flatpak, snaps, and app images. But if you have a brand new computer, if you want to use the latest AMD GPU or an Intel Arc GPU, then I'm not even sure Zorin OS will actually support them. And if it does, it's not going to give you a good experience. And same for NVIDIA. If you actually want to use NVIDIA on Wayland, Zorin OS is not suitable because it doesn't have access to the versions of the drivers that actually fix the related issues. Now, Zorin OS also still keeps the cool things that they used to add on the site. First, you get Zorin Connect, which is KDE Connect, and the GS Connect extension for GNOME Shell. It's nice to have that out of the box to better integrate your Android or iOS device with your Linux computer. You also get an easy one-click install of Wine called Windows App Support. It installs Wine and Play on Linux, so you can try and run various Windows executables. Of course, Wine work has recently focused a lot more on playing games, which is done much, much better using Proton and Steam or the Heroic Launcher or Lutris. But Wine can still run a fair few Windows apps. As per Play on Linux, it's been in maintenance mode for a while. There hasn't been any official news on the website since 2022 and no new release published for a while. Their current repos are stopped at Ubuntu Cosmic, so 18.10. The version of Wine Zorin installs is Wine 8.0.2, so pretty much a full year behind the latest updates, as Wine 9.0 is almost there. So Zorian's Windows app support is a cool idea, and I'm sure it will help a few people run a few specific things, but it's also outdated as all hell, and it will not run a bunch of the apps that people will actually try and run, like a recent version of Microsoft Office or the Adobe Suite. I get that they skip the unstable releases, but honestly, with compatibility layers, you do not want to use the stable versions. Those things move way too fast. Don't get stuck on a stable version. Install unstable Wine and don't use Play on Linux. It's basically dead. Now, finally, Zorin OS debloats the base install a little bit, with the pre-installed games getting the boots and the maps and to-do apps aren't provided by default either. Zorin OS 17 will be supported until June 2027, so as long as Ubuntu 22.04 LTS will be. So are these updates enough for Zorin OS to reclaim the Linux beginner crown? Well, maybe, but not really. 
If you were a Zorin OS 16 user, there is no doubt that yes, you want to upgrade. You will get a much better experience all around, so go ahead. If you already know and use another Linux distro, Zorin OS does nothing that you could not replicate yourself with a tiny bit of extra work, and you will probably also get a newer GNOME desktop, newer internals, better drivers, and less of a mishmash of app versions inside of GNOME. If you're a Linux beginner though, what has been introduced in GNOME 44 and 45 won't be too big of a miss for you. You probably want a stable, polished experience to avoid having to deal with tons of issues and get your bearings. And Zorin OS does make that transition really easy. You can replicate an OS you know in a few clicks, at least superficially, and everything is there to make your start with Linux as smooth and stable as possible. But there remains one big issue. With so many customizations and versions mismatch and themes and extensions, basically, the moment something breaks, you're not going to be able to just apply an Ubuntu tutorial because it's not going to fix your issue and you're gonna have to resort to asking for help for Zorin OS specifically, which it is a popular distro, but it's just not as big as Mint or Ubuntu or Fedora, so you might not get as much help or documentation or support. And so, yes, it's easier to start, but the moment you encounter a problem, you might be stuck where you wouldn't on another less familiar distro, but better supported. So right now, I would recommend Zorin OS to a lot of beginners, but not to all of them. If your computer is really recent, or you're just building a new one with modern components and you want to install Linux on it, don't go for Zorin OS, basically, that's what I'm saying. The base is too old, the drivers are too old, the kernel is too old, and you're not going to have good support, or at least you're not gonna have good performance. For everyone else, if you're a Linux beginner, if your computer is two, three or more years old, then yes, go ahead, it's a fantastic first experience with Linux. The work is just done for you all along. You have not much to think about. The only issue is if you encounter a big problem, you might not be able to fix it without asking for help specifically for Zorin OS. And I'm not sure that the community is big enough to actually help you in a timely fashion. And of course, if you want to completely avoid hardware related problems, then you can also just buy a computer that was made to run Linux from our sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a Linux hardware manufacturer. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. They ship laptops, NUCs, and desktops with Linux pre-installed. They specifically pick all the components because they run well with Linux. And if they encounter a few bugs here and there in their testing, they fix them upstream so everyone can benefit. Their range is pretty wide. You should find anything you want, whatever the price point, whatever the power level. You can configure all devices. You can open the laptops, repair them, upgrade them. You can have your own keyboard layout on your laptop, your own logo on the lid. They're basically all I use nowadays. My main laptop, which is also my editing station from which I run all this channel and my podcast, it's all from Tuxedo. My SteamOS console is a Tuxedo Cube. It's a PC from them. It's all I use. They're really good. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it, and you also want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a computer from Tuxedo. They're really, really solid. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. There's a like button, a subscribe button, a little notification bell, a comment section. Do all of those things and this video should be more popular. And if you didn't like it, you can always click that dislike button and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support what I do, well, there are plenty of links in the description of the video to do just that. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.